Welcome back to Conversations with Brother John Amazzini, just having a powerful time around the Word of God, unpacking things. Money is spiritual, and uh, money, that's why money is so under attack. And right now, you know, we, we, we kind of ended off the session. We see the tide being under a, attack right now. Tremendous. And uh, we, we, we did in one of the sessions talk about tithing, how it was pre-law. We went through that. But what would you have to say, you know, to people watching right now as we look at this? And, you know, we kind of talked about where things are heading. And we all believe in grace. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but many times there's a truth in something that has error. And so mm -hmm. as the truth comes, what happens? Error slips in. Mm. Under the under the cover, under the and then error grows. What would you say uh, to speak into that to people who are learning or pastors maybe who are struggling? Well, if I speak directly into the controversy that now has arisen among the brethren, I have to say that with the greatest respect, I have the I love with all my heart mm. some of the opposition in this to what I believe. Yes. But I would I'd lay down my life for the mm. for that brother. Mm -hmm. He is a friend of mine, mm. but I think we have a, an error. Mm. The tithe, as we know, it started with uh, Abraham and Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. And so we are clear of the law. Mm -hmm. It's another 400 years before the mm. law takes place. Mm. And then it's incorporated into the law. Mm -hmm. Now, the law was set down by God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if, if, if something's going to be incorporated into what the move of God is, mm -hmm. it must be extremely important. Mm -hmm. Because if that was just a man, it would have been left. But God moved it in and incorporated mm -hmm. it into the law. Mm -hmm. Didn't come in by the law. It was incorporated there. Mm -hmm. And then it went on through even into in Malachi that speaks there, bring all the tithe in the uh, storehouse, or maybe meet in my house, prove me now, admit if I not open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. And then it speaks also to those that have robbed God of the tithe and the offering, mm. that they're cursed with a curse. Mm. And there seems to be a pivot on the curse with a curse, mm. that that had nothing to, could not be with a born again person. Mm. Well, we have three that come to mind very quickly that were born again, well into the New Testament era. Mm. There was um, um, Simon the Sorcerer, um, Ananias. Ananias, uh -huh. okay. Ananias. I was I was moving. Yeah. I think earlier than Ananias came. Yeah. Ananias and Sapphira. Okay, yeah. Yeah. the beginning. Yeah, those two had made a promise mm. and then gone back on it. Didn't keep the promise. Changed their promise. Lied to the Holy Ghost and they dropped dead. You mm. you would you could assume that there was a curse on those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there you have into the New Testament era, there is a curse. And yeah. then Simon the sorcerer, mm. very clear, very mm. clear. Simon the sorcerer, he said, cursed be thou and thy money mm. if you think you can buy the things of the Holy Ghost. Mm. And he then is seen moving on still as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it clearly said that he was cursed. Yeah. Now, Part of the argument that I'm understanding, and I can, you can't ever fully understand what someone else is saying yep. unless you spend much time with them listening, mm -hmm. but it sounds to me like it's being said there can be no curse mm -hmm. on a born-again believer. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems like that would be the case with uh, Simon the Sorcerer. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, uh, Jay. Mm -hmm. What, what do, you, do you feel anything at this a, a point? A couple though? things. Yes, yes, sir. A couple things that stand out to me about that is if if we're saying that, well, first of all, we have the nature of God and the character of God, which all through Scripture, from from Genesis all the way through to to into our eschatology, we see that God is continually rewarding obedience, and He is punishing or He is disapproving of in a very obvious way of disobedience. Yep. So it's, I mean, this has continued into the church age. We see Paul addressing this over and over again about people's behavior. Yeah. So what we do does have implications for this life yeah. and for what, what, uh, what, what is going to come in yeah. eternity. God honors obedience. He mm. enjoys it. He loves it. He prizes it. Mm -hmm. And disobedience he has no place for. Yeah. Now, the next thing that people will pivot onto is, well, that's part of the law. Mm -hmm. And it's not part of what we're doing now under grace. A mm -hmm. couple things. First of all, grace, 
I believe a, a, a full definition of grace is divine enablement. Yeah, divine enablement. It, is a, it yeah. is a divine enablement or empowerment to change, not to stay the same, to go from glory unto glory into the fullness of the image of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in the earth. And that's done by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. If we want to just throw out the, the, the law, then are we, are we going to throw out that we shouldn't honor our mother and father? Yeah. I mean... Well, it's in the law. Moses had that right in the Ten Commandments. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if we throw that out, then would we say, well, under grace, we don't need to honor our mother and father? Yeah. That's you, you, Interrupting you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Part of what I understand that the philosophy and the theology that's being used is that we're now no longer under that Old Testament. Yes. yes. But for over 200 years after the death of Christ. Yes. The church operated without a New Testament. That's right. Yeah. So do those all become uh, illegitimate? Uh, do those all come uh, flawed saints mm -hmm. in that they had flawed doctrine because their book was the Old Testament? Yeah. 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 But then in that, from the New Testament, it, is it is it First or Second Peter where uh, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God? Yes, sir. And. Uh, but see, Simon Peter in the, uh, mm. uh, uh, it's it's Timothy. Yes. Uh, out of the out of the New Testament, before it's canonized, yep. Timothy reaches out and legitimizes all Scripture. Yes. And he would be talking about the Old Testament. That's, That's right. Second Timothy three sixteen and Second Timothy three sixteen mm -hmm. and seventeen. All Scripture. All Scripture, and as Timothy speaks. Yep. He doesn't even know about all of the uncanonized yes. Yep, books. Yes. Yep. But he does know Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, yep. Joshua, Judges. He knows these. Yes. So he, you have to eliminate Timothy's opinion. Yeah. To do away with the Old Testament. Yeah. Because he, he quantified the Old Testament, and in time, what he spoke came to be also descriptive of the New Testament. Mm. But he wrote it to the Old Testament. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You follow. Yep. So you can't get rid of the Old Testament no. because really it is it is it is one word. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. It would be see, if the Old Testament is the is the word of God, mm -hmm. then the Old Testament is God. Mm -hmm. Just like the New Testament is the word of yep. God. If it's his word, then it is him. Yeah. So we can't say we don't need this old you, God. Yep. We want the new you. Yep. No. Yeah. That's but so you have to know how to make the two blend with each yes. other. Yep. And then you have to know that certain things change as you went along. Yep. Adam and Eve had a right to the Garden of Eden. They had every right to be in there, but there came yep. a day they couldn't go in there anymore. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So that means that benefit left. Yep. It didn't have to, you didn't have to throw away the Old Testament to get rid of that, but it, it left, but then so many other things stayed. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you see the tithe staying. Yep. Because Jesus is very clear. He says, you know, you 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 fellas are, are tithing on all this little bit of things that you do. He said, you ought to do that. Yep. You better do that. Yep. But then don't leave the others undone. Yep. And really he was dealing with the heart. Because you can go through the motions, and I think that was kind of one of the theology that was yep. coming out. We, we shouldn't just be doing this out of fear or out of law. But what did Jesus say? He said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill it. And then he said, you, you love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all, which, which tithing really, the root, the, the foundation of it came from honoring God. They didn't, Abraham didn't have a law. They didn't have it in, in the garden. We looked yeah. at it. And so you, you mentioned a principle about the difference between justice and a father, which I thought oh. was so powerful that really struck this home with me can you because we all believe in grace Go ahead. Bring, uh, bring it back to my mind so you, you talked about when the issue of tithing and honoring god it's not about looking god as a god's going to judge me in a, about justice yeah, but it's way. about judicial it's about a oh well, that yes this is great for grace. that was yeah. so you, you know uh one of the things that is some way attached to this decision to, to stop the tithe mm. and I, this is an assumption i make that most of the time I see the move towards grace mm -hmm. and heavy towards grace, mm -hmm. all of a sudden we're moving towards not having the time. Mm -hmm. But I, I thank God for the grace movement. That 
having been a uh, Baptist, mm-hmm. I learned eternal security. Yeah. <laughs> now I became a charismatic. I did not leave eternal security. I didn't mm-hmm. push it anymore because mm-hmm. it was divisive. Mm-hmm. But the truth is now, if in the grace movement, you have my sins now are as far from the east as from the west, they've been removed from me. Mm. Mm-hmm. They have gone to infinity mm-hmm. in both directions. It's impossible to associate with you with them again. Yeah. So when I sin, I do not have a judicial problem. Mm-hmm. You can't take me back to the courtroom. That's been settled. Yep, at the cross. <laughs> at yeah. the cross. Yeah, absolutely. But I have a parental problem, mm. and I need to repent to the Father. Mm. <laughs> if I sin today, my sin has been forgiven because past, present, and future. He didn't just save my, forgive my sins to the day that I was saved. Yep. He did it all. And it was complete and conclusive. Mm-hmm. But I now am operating as a son mm-hmm. in the father's house. Well, that's so good. And if I sin, I have offended him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my repentance is to him for my offense yep. of our relationship so that our relationship yep. can open again. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I do, I, I love the I love the faith, the faith move that came into the into the body of Christ because it it, it dovetailed with eternal security. Yeah, well, grace, grace, exactly. grace was inside yeah. of me, the grace, the yes. grace. But then I, I I just can't all of a sudden say I don't repent anymore because I now have a, this overriding parental relationship. Yeah. yeah. I'm a son of God. Yeah. And even in my house with a natural father. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I sinned, mm-hmm. yes, I had a problem with God mm-hmm. at that time because mm-hmm. I was not a savior. Yeah. I was not saved, but I had a big problem with dad. Wow. Because the parental had been broken. That makes it so clear. Now I'm in a higher parental yeah. relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I'm now a son of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Of the God kind. Mm-hmm. I'm no longer of the mankind. Mm-hmm. I'm of the God kind. Yeah. And I'm a son of this God. Yeah. yeah. And as I sin, I am broken before him yeah, that's it. because my parental relationship has yeah. been yeah. broken. Yes. You cannot take me back to the courthouse. That's solved. Yeah. But I must stay straight with my parent. Yes. That's powerful. If yes. I, but now on the tide, let me say this. I was on the airplane the other day, and I'm riding along in the airplane, and they say, the mask rule is off. You don't have to wear a mask. But there are going to be people that want to wear a mask. Mm. So please do not interfere with their right to wear a mask. And it hit me just sitting right here. Hey, if if you want to take a chance on not tithing, I'm not going to have trouble with you about that. Mm. (laughs) I mean, but I'm going to tithe. I'd rather get to heaven and get eat out for giving too much. Yeah. Than to have a word said about me not giving enough. Yep. Wow. Yep. So when I get to heaven, if tithing is wrong, I will stand rebuked before <laughs> the whole assembly. <laughs> but I'd rather take a chance on maybe not showing up there and getting rebuked for not tithing. Yep. Rather than be rebuked than John, you gave too much. Yeah. yeah. You did too much. You did too much. Too much. Rather than you didn't do it. You did, well, why didn't you tie? So, wow. Well, so and so said not to. Well, wow. my said, I said to do it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, those were those kind of good. I, I think that's beautiful because, you know, we, we, much of the church has an orphan mindset. And that's wow. why they're operating under fear. And, and I believe that's wrong. We need to understand we're sons. But how much more as a son, you don't do it because of law. Mm-hmm. You, you don't do it because of fear. You do it out of love. Your yeah, motivation is wanting to yeah. please your father. And you remember I told you this somewhere along the line. But the tithe never looked to me like something that made me fear or made me yeah. feel. Guilted into. It was a ladder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a ladder because I had to, what I was taught, I had to get past the tithing where addition took place. So that I could get to the offerings, yep. where multiplication took place. That's, it. That's yeah. it. And I never came. I never became wealthy yeah. tithing. Yeah. I don't think you get wealthy tithing. Yeah. But if you get on up into the offerings, yeah. there comes thirtyfold, yeah. sixtyfold, 
hundred volt. That's good. The tithing is elementary. That's yes. the start. It's simple. You know, it's simple. And I think you know we would look at a, a, if we say we honor our family, but we only gave our wife ten percent to run the family and 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 kept ninety percent. Would we love our family? But we're saying do less than that. Give two yeah. percent. Yeah. It, so it, it, or, or saying to your wife. Um, it just bothers me to give you that money. I hate to give you that money. I, I really do it because I have to, not because I want to. <laughs> yeah. I'm on. I don't have the money because I wanted to. Yeah. I tithe because I want to. It's yes. not that I have to. We honor the Lord. It's really how fruits. you're taught. Yeah, it That's is. right. Lester yes. Miller taught me very carefully mm. that that tithe was a way out of my problem, mm. not an addition to my problem. That's so good. It was my way out of my problem. Yeah. And God's trying to bring it to us. He's not trying to take from take us as a religious duty. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Two things that come to mind. One thing is that the New Testament is so clear that the standard and the sacrifice that we are going to have to uh, put down in our life is so much greater than what was put on the people in the Old Testament. I mean, Jesus says, if you want to follow me, you've got to lay down your life, take up your cross and follow me. Yeah. We're promised persecution. We're promised hardship. But we're promised that we're going to come out the other side. Yeah. But nowhere in Scripture do we see a, a pivot that, hey, we can all take it easy and relax, and whatever's going to happen is going to happen. No, all, what we continually see is that we're in the army of God, That's that we right. need to be dressed for battle, yeah. and we need to be ready, and we need to be pushing Forward. Yeah. And I thank God that, that, that this controversy has erupted because it's bringing a new clarity to this doctrine yeah, of good. tithes and offerings. It's a good thing. Yeah. And I say this. I know the hearts of the person primarily involved here. Mm -hmm. And there's not a, not a better man yep. on planet Earth. Yep. I'd do anything for him. If he called me today, I'd do anything he asked me to do. Yep. He's a good man. Yep. And, and that's the thing. As brother, we've got to still walk in love even though we're there. But I think, you know, when we, when we look at something, and even for me, I went back to the word. We yeah. had discussion. We need to go and, if anything, it makes our conviction stronger on the word of God yes. as we come into these conflicts. May, may I add something? Um, it's good to look at the first time you see something in Scripture. Mm -hmm. Kind of that, the law first. First mention. First, yes, the law, law of first, first mention. mention. Whenever we see the first offering, the uh, corporate offering that happens in the Bible, it's in Exodus 35. And in that moment, Moses is, is he, he's standing before the people and he says, we're going to have an offering. Mm -hmm. God has declared there's going to be an offering. Mm -hmm. We're going to build the tabernacle. Now, all the, that the children of Israel had had been handed over to them from the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. There was the, one of the greatest transfers of wealth, wealth transfer. out of the hands of the wicked and into the hands of the righteous was there in that moment. But it wasn't just so that they could have a bunch of gold out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. It was so that they could be in this offering. Now, when that tabernacle is completed, we see in Exodus chapter 40 that the presence of God was no longer waiting on the mountain for Moses. Mm -hmm. But now it was dwelling in the presence of the people mm -hmm. right there among them. Yep. And before God said we need to have this offering, he had that end picture in mind, mm -hmm. That's right. which was him being closer to his yeah. people. Yeah. Where your treasure is, your heart is going That's to right. be. Yep. And if everything that we have is from God, well, then just let him direct you in what to do Amen. with it because he wants Amen. to be closer to you. It's so it. they, and, and I love the, back to the rich young ruler, which we talked oh, yeah. about. I mean, the New Testament, Jesus didn't say go and tithe. He said sell all that you have. Because he knew that that was a strong His heart. Part. And, 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 and in the New Testament, it goes back to what we talked about in one of the other episodes. We're not owners. Yeah. We're, we're stewards. It all belongs to him. Giving is one of the only proofs that you're not struggling with greed. That's it. I mean, <laughs> I mean. It. It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, there you have it. It doesn't get much clearer than that. I think, you know, it's good for us to go back. The Bible says better were those in Thessalonica. They search the word daily to know oh, what yeah. was true. We need to get in the word and be strong. In this day and age, you know, many people, they don't know the word of God. Don't just listen to a preacher. Don't even listen to just what we're saying. Go and search the word of God for yourself and the scriptures will become clear to you. We'll see you in the next episode.